Hello. How is everyone doing? It's been a while, hasn't it? I always say that. Um, things are going to change, and I can't tell you uh, why right now, but I will be able to hopefully next week. I'm going to start doing these weekly or keep them every other week and just make them a bit longer. Um, if you are watching, please do jump on a comment and say hello and where you're where you're watching from. Uh, thanks to Beverly Hughes. Um, she did some investigation, and I know that there's a bit of a uh, time delay from when you post to when I when I see it here. So it's a little bit like those old broadcasts for the news when they were kind of going to another country, and there was just this weird delay. So, but still keep them in. Still keep them coming in. Um, shall we start with? If you saw my post yesterday. Um, Let's start with the beard, because I had a bit of a mistake. Probably like your town, uh, within about two miles of where I live, there's like 27 Turkish barbers. And I, I love a Turkish uh, barber. That could be misconstrued, but I think they're brilliant. But I just couldn't be bothered to go. So I thought I'd do it myself, and I just shaved without the attachment, I thought I only need to clip a little bit and I shaved a huge chunk out of the side of my beard. So I had to do the same on on both sides. So I'm bringing back the, the goatee for a bit. I don't like it. <laughs> right, let's crack on, shall we? I kind of need your involvement on this one. So I do hope there are people watching. I'm not sure anyone is. I did see someone else's live the other day, right? And um, they said that they, oh, I can see people people joining. I'm assuming unless they're using something other than StreamYard, I have no idea how many people are watching. Um, so let's have a look. Right. The first thing I wanted to share is I got asked this question the other day. For people that um, are fans of Get Out of Rap and the, the little community that we have created, what should we we call ourselves? Um, or, well, it was actually my good friend Lee, Lee Houghton, who is a legend, said, what what do we call ourselves? And I said, I have, I have no idea. Um, the one I came up with, after a bit of thought, was rappers or gousters, but I would love to get your input into, for, it, like I say, I like to think we've become a, a community. Um, hopefully we have. What should we call ourselves? Because I know that there's places who, I remember Dino from Ventrica coined the phrase Ventricans, and he was very passionate about that, and I, I, I absolutely loved it. So, um, what should we call ourselves? Here's what I want. That's the question of the day. Um, so if you either now or at any other point, please just email me or drop in the comments here. What should we call ourselves? Now for your favorite part of the show, let's go to the news. The observant or amongst you will notice that I haven't changed the date on that. It still says the 28th of June, so hardly new. Um, but I thought this was interesting for a number of reasons. Uh, that is, one, uh, you remember I shared a few weeks ago that um, there's uh, the Spanish government have introduced a law, or it's, it's being passed now around, there's a maximum wait time of... I think it's three minutes allowed for IVRs and things like that. Well, this is a sign that there's more and more involvement from governments into our industry. And here you can see that the French government are aiming to pass outbound laws. So earlier this year, they've already passed a law that all call centres must prefix their number with 09 so that customers can identify the type of call it is. And I think if you look at where we are right now, 
the majority of out, certainly outbound calls are often um, sat behind the the number identification is actually a mobile. So it's it's interesting to see that the French government and you could argue the Spanish government as well are looking to kind of curb a little bit of the activity or at least kind of control some of the activity that's coming out from the contact centre industry in those countries because I, I couldn't find anything, but I'd be really interested to know what impact that first laws already had. So those kind of the calls that have um, zero nine on them, I imagine for those people that do know, they're not taking those calls. And I, I wonder if answer answer percentages have really kind of fallen away as a result of that. Um, anyway, the new set of law that's being proposed, and this is due to come into effect from March of next year, so not long, is that on outbound calls, calls are only going to be allowed between 10 and 1 and 2 and 8, uh, Monday to Friday. No calling at the weekend and no calling on public holidays. So it's going to be interesting to to see how that how that pans out what does the what i mean from a outbound was where i started to where i cut my teeth really and i have to say we kind of did stuff like that anyway we um certainly when it was a time of just terrestrial tv that's how long ago it was that we would avoid east enders and coronation street we would avoid if there was a big uh, game football game being shown on tv we would dial down the dialer um, at the weekends completely. And we would, you know, because it was about contact rate. So I kind of look at these things and think this is good. Um, they, they're set in a maximum number of times you can contact a customer is set at four. And again, I know with some radar rules, certainly back in the day, you, you know, you, you try and exhaust the data, let's say, but, Certainly, from my point of view, I think these are all good things. I would love to um, hear what you have to think. So far, no, <laughs> no comments. I could be talking to myself. Um, but that's all right. I, I do that quite often anyway. So let me now share with you a feature that I really love. We, we're we heading into uh, awards set award season aren't we it's kind of november everyone goes crazy for awards but i wanted to use this show as a way of highlighting just the good that's happening out there every single day and some of you have already um shared the teams and a message so i just wanted to share one for a shout out to the nespresso customer relationship center leadership team and this is Andy, Joe, Jordan, Olivia, Ben, Dave, and Dan. And in the middle there, <laughs> where is he? This guy right here. You can see that is Dan Cohen. Great guy. He's already, already he's um, been a guest on the on the show. He's he's just an awesome all round guy. But I just want to tell you what he said about Andy, Joe, Jordan, Olivia. Uh, ben and Dave. So this is from Dan. Dan said, their attitude, ability and tenacity is an inspiration to Dan every single day. Not only are they delivering exceptional results, but are leading the way in delivering some excellent innovation this year. All summed up, I couldn't be more grateful to have them as my team. And how how cool is that? And that's them on a on a night out because they really do kind of stick with the, the ethos of our industry, which is work hard and play hard. So um, to the Nespresso customer relationship center leadership team, thanks very much for kind of um, exhibiting everything that's good about our industry and uh, more power to you. Look at their lovely smiling faces. So thank you, Dan. For anyone else that wanted to, um, get a shout out to their team please don't hesitate just to get in touch as you see here all I need is a photo the names of the people and what it is you would like to 
um, say about them. So let's crack on. Oh, what have I done? As you know, <laughs> this picture of me talking about me. Um, so I mentioned uh, before that I'm going to be talking at the Expo. Hopefully you are going to make it there. That's the 22nd of November uh, in in London. Um, I think it's at the Excel. I better check. I'm pretty sure it is. But on the on the first day in the keynote theater at quarter to three, uh, I'm just going to be doing a uh, a speech that I've called the Magic Weekend. It's not about a weekend in Amsterdam or a weekend with um, David Blaine or Paul Daniels. This is about the transition from being an, an agent to a, a team leader. Uh, please do get along. I'll be sharing uh, my thoughts on it, some tips and what I think we need to be doing more of as, a, as an industry. Before that, and I had real good fun doing this with, um, with my good friend, Chris Rainsforth, um, is I've... I'm going to be talking at the forum's virtual conference, and that is the 17th of November. I love the forum. I think the forum are great. They absolutely um, demonstrate, you know, that all they're all they're about is learning and helping people and helping people with their um, career and things like that. So I'm really happy to be a part of their virtual conference. I will also be at the face to face one, which I think is the ninth of November. Chris, if you are watching, please just, or if you're watching this later, please just pop a comment on there to confirm I've got that right. I'm pretty sure it's the 9th. Um, but this speech is on the 17th of November and it's 10 lessons from the podcast. So we're up to about a hundred and we've done 131 uh, episodes. Um, some of them are repeat guests. Some of them are just me wittering but it's over a hundred guests and you'd, you'd be able to point to all of them and say, even if not in a hierarchical sense, they're all subject matter experts. They've all, they all demonstrate great experience and skills in their chosen field. And I've learned so much from just spending time talking to them, listening to them more than, more than anything and so I spoke with Chris about it, but I just love, I haven't ever done it. I'd love the opportunity to share some of the lessons from uh, the podcast. And that's what I'll be doing on the on the 17th. It's a virtual conference. So you can join from the comfort of your own home. And I will be sharing the 10 lessons I've learned from the, the podcast. So I hope you can make um, one of those events would be great. If you're going to the expo, it'll be great to see you in person. Come and say hello. And um, I'm shorter than you imagine, just so you know, because one, one guy got kind of obsessed with it. He just couldn't stop saying, I'm sorry to say this again, but you're much shorter than I imagined. I was like, okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Right. I want to share with you someone who I think is awesome. And this is... Uh, Tina Squire. Now, Tina was a guest on episode 112 of Get Out of Rap. And at the time, she was still a contact centre director. And we would we just talked about her journey and her passion for um, helping people with ADHD. And that is because later on in her career, Tina found out, or Tina was diagnosed, got a professional diagnosis, that she also um, had ADHD. And what did that mean for her? And how, once she understood that, and once she understood how to best get the best out of herself, what that has done for her career has been um, amazing. And she's just a lovely, lovely person. So this is my person to follow uh, this week. Uh, ADHD, because now actually I should have said Tina has gone on to um, take this up as a full time career, which I think is which is brilliant. So she's now an ADHD coach, a speaker, and a consultant. Still very much um, 
operate in in the contact center world but also has spread her wings elsewhere and she is supporting professionals achieve their full potential she shares really interesting content obviously it's a obvious follow if you are interested in adhd you have it you know someone that has it uh, but even if you don't i would recommend following um tina connecting with her she's very approachable and just get to get to know her still no comments come on guys what's going on <laughs> have i done some oh uh, i know why i know okay so here is a a nice share um i put together this infographic if i remove my Okay, no. So what steps should you take when taking over a, a new team? Um, I'm working in the background on a team leader community and um, someone in that asked me about, asked me this question. I'm about to take over a new team. What should I do? Actually, she said her tendency was to be like a bull in a china shop, which I can 100% <laughs> relate to it was often action first thought later for me um so here are the steps i think you should take when taking over a new team i on my dog walk this morning um i went through this on my tiktok and that's on tiktok and youtube just look for get out a rap but number one is connect before you lead i think Often there is a tendency to show you're the leader, start giving directions. Sometimes, of course, you're going to have to, but without having established any sense of relationship, either collectively or individually, it's a real challenge. So number one, connect before you lead. What, how do you do that? It's very simple. You just, just make sure that you spend time getting to to know people. I can remember taking over teams and being questioned by my um, leaders at the time as to what I was doing because all they saw me doing was wandering around chatting to the team. Um, that was intentional because I, at that point, had suffered through making mistakes of not doing it, that we, um, it's better to know people, know where they're at, find out about, about their lives, how long they've worked. And if you're not naturally a, a people person because you, let's say you're introverted, you're an excellent team leader, um, but it's not necessarily because you um, establish, have a, have great relationships with people or, or that it's something you've, you've got to work at. Just prepare, just spend a bit of time beforehand asking, thinking I'm going to have a bank of five questions that will enable people to, um, talk to me and it really is just saying look I'm taking over the team I just wanted to know a little bit more about you how long have you worked here what do you like about it um, you know who's your best friend what or just just things like that in um, have you when was the last time you had training you know you can keep it work related if you want you don't necessarily need to know their their life story but without any kind of connection um, and often people will give you give you clues if you just ask how they're doing, um, you know, what are their interests outside of work is a great one. And just just take an interest. Before you know it, you'll actually then be leading, leading people rather than just kind of a team. Uh, the next one is understand and do the tasks that the team do. That especially if you're moving companies, you're not going to know everything straight away. And that's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What, what I'm saying is um, the team need to see you do the job and they also need to see you. you. You don't need to be brilliant at it. You can actually fail. You can share that it's difficult and tough. Um, but the team need to see you do the task that they do. And if some of that is mundane and difficult, even better, because they need to, they need to know that you're the type of leader that will roll up your sleeves, get stuck in. And also from your point of view, it really helps you get an understanding of of where they're at and um, how they're. You'll make better decisions as a result of understanding the tough things, the frustrations. And I'll, I'll give you a very simple example. 
it's one thing to theoretically understand and see the makeup of the systems that your team might have to use. It's a total other one where you've got a customer on the line and you're trying to navigate through five different systems to find out where their order is or add something to it or deal with a query. That kind of mental strain over and over again will enable you to kind of be that mouthpiece to say, look, we need to do something about our our systems but you'll only get that through you know a day in the life of or sitting in their shoes number three is set expectations this is something i've done every team that i've um, ever been a leader of and that is once you've once you've understood the team and you've connected with them you've understood the tasks then i would do something where i would say now here's what I expect from you. Yeah, here's some here's some basics. Do these things, and everything will be good. Here's what you can expect from me, and I think this is really important. That your team need to know you'll treat everyone the same. They need to know that you will um, really back up their career and take a real interest in um, making sure that they can progress, develop whatever it is that they uh, they're motivated by that you are in their corner and that you will kind of operate this kind of servant leadership. You're, you're there, you're there for support, but within the boundaries that you set in terms of what you expect from them, this kind of contract and getting an agreement to this contract, because it may be that people amend something in it. Um, getting this agreement means then that you can refer to it in the future. You've established the boundaries, you've established the contract between you so it just takes the emotion out of a lot of instances or behaviors that later on you kind of can refer to and say remember this was our agreement if you did this I would do all of these other things where well, you haven't done it or you've broken this agreement you know um, that absolutely uh, can set the set your rules and kind of set your stall out from the word go Right, involve the team. Whilst you're pretty early in taking over the team, ask for their ask for their input. It's a you know a new a new leader is a real chance to change things. Um, a great exercise here is start, stop, continue. You can do it paper based. You can do it. Um, you can set up some Google form. But basically, what you ask your team to do is to list the things that they, you would, they would like to start doing or see in the team, list the things that they would like to stop doing. So what are the things that happen when they, you know, they, they're not quite sure? And what are the things that are working really well that they wouldn't want to see um, changed? Now, again, in terms of expectations, you might say, oh, this is for information only. If I can act on it, I absolutely will. Don't promise things that you can't deliver. Um, but start, stop, continue is a is a really good one. And then the final one is maximize being new. When we've all started at companies, when we're in that kind of inquisitive mindset and we're going, oh, why do you do it like that? Just remember that often people kind of get institutionalized and they will just go, oh, this is the way we've always done it. That power that you have when you first start is brilliant. You're full of energy. You're motivated. You want to bring to bear things that you've learned elsewhere and you want to question things. And through that questioning, you can really um, add massive amounts to process improvement, to team engagement and all of that kind of thing. Um, so those are my five steps you should take when you take over a new team. I'd love to know what you think. Um, what do you think of this? Okay. Next, we have a giveaway. Now, you may have seen all over LinkedIn. It might be annoying you a little bit, but these are the team leader uh, planners that I have um, designed. I'm just going to show you this in a little bit more detail. You can see there's a message from me at the start, and then there is... Um, a the planner section here gives you everything you need to do to have an effective day and then on the other on every other page there is a notes page so you can 
write down how your day's gone, plan for your meetings. Um, here's a picture of someone using it. There's been uh, 200 of them sold. They come in three colors. There's blue, pink, and brown. All you have to do is, I've got a number of them here right now in all three colors. Uh, please, just all you need to do is email me and say you want one for one of your team, and I will send it to them. So I will be giving away. That's it. You don't have to do anything more than that. Just email me. Give me the name of the person you want to have the planner and the address, and I will get that sent to them today. So finally, I just want to tell you about an amazing event, again, that you might have seen on uh, LinkedIn, and that is a uh, the very first Play in Pink Cup at Boundary Park. Um, Boundary Park is a, a sports stadium kind of or sports area near where I live, and this was done. We were inspired, or I was inspired by my... Um, sister-in-law Sharon who is resplendent in the center of that photo with her pink tracksuit uh, sporting she probably wears a bold head far better than than me with a lot of the comments originally our football group we play every Sunday we wanted to just donate our match fees to um, breast cancer now which is an amazing amazing charity um, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month as well. And Friday was the Wear It Pink Day. So this was the nearest Sunday to that. And we decided to play in pink. We had a tournament, 28 players. Everyone wore pink. And then we changed into the four different kits and then got back into the pink shirts for the presentation and the, and the photo. We actually included, and you can see him front row laughing, leaning over a little bit. Uh, that is um, Dominic, who played in the World Cup quarterfinal. <laughs> so we have all uh, ability ranges in, in this team. Um, we had a cake stand, a tombola, and it was just it was just amazing. The power of community and adding some positivity to what is a, a dark time. Obviously, it's not. Um, this is a horrible disease that affects lots and lots of people. But um, as, a, as a team, we were really proud to come out and play. Uh, there was about 100 people, I think, in the end, watching, buying cakes. We had so many people donate. Boundary Park let us play everywhere for free. They set some stuff up in the bar. And we raised an additional £501. Um, so now our total, we're only £179 short of £3,000. So... Uh, I'll keep. I'm going to keep this just giving page open. Um, it would be amazing if we could get to three thousand pounds. So many of you have already donated from LinkedIn. It would be brilliant if you um, if you could just a couple of pounds would make a difference. But I'd love to get to uh, three thousand pounds. And if you are near or close or want to travel to the Oxfordshire region. Next year, we will be doing Playing Pink, and it's going to be even bigger. Uh, we're going to be using all the pitches and inviting players from or teams from outside of our group to, to play. Um, there's trophies. It's all, it's all going to be done professionally. It's a really good, it's a really good laugh. But, um, yeah, if you can help, thank you. That would be great if you could. So thank you for watching. Um, not sure what's happened with the comments. They don't seem to be to be working, or maybe just no one's watching. But I hopefully you found the content helpful. I'll be doing these weekly. I've got some news coming that will um, make that clearer as to why I'm doing it. And I'm also going to be doing some more interactive stuff where you'll see other people, not just me, and we can have a proper chat about the industry that we love. Um, but. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching.